Hey guys, Sergio here with Tech Over Clock. In today's video, I want to share my experience building a Hackintosh. The problems that I had, the issues, the troubleshooting, everything in today's video. If you're considering building a Hackintosh computer, get ready to have headaches, get angry. You need to have a lot of patience and more patience and more patience. But before I get into the video, guys, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing and become part of the family. All right, guys, let's get into this video. Was it easy to install the operating system? No. Was it easy to get myself up and going? No. Is it easy as you see on the videos on how to install a uh, Mac OS Sierra on a custom computer? Is it easy like that? No, it's not. And the reason why? Because some of these videos on YouTube, they're five, six, they're one month, two or three months old, or even two years old or one year old. And Mac OS Sierra updates all the time and when there is an update of Mac OS it changes a lot of the codes it changes a lot of the text so is it easy to build a Hackintosh computer right now in today's date no it is not <laughs> it's not because some of the problems some of the new text or the new codes are different than three months old codecs or codes or text whatever you want to call it they're different so if you get stuck trying to boot or trying to install the operating system you can probably install the operating system just fine like I did I was able to go ahead and install Mac OS Sierra on my SSD and I was successful enough to come in to the Mac OS Sierra desktop like I like I am right here right now let me lower this real quick I was successful enough to come over here and use the multi beast and install all of my drivers right but what happened after having a successful installation and installing all of my drivers and everything else i went ahead and hit the restart right and i wasn't able to get back in i wipe out my ssd again following all the guides following everything right and everything was a failure after i hit the restart i could not get back in to my os so i gave it up i said you know what i am done i got upset I installed Ubuntu into the computer, I didn't like it so much, so I went ahead and I put Windows into the computer and I was done. I was going to sell the computer Windows 10, but then I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and go to the forums on Tony Mac x 86 and I went ahead and posted, guys, I am stuck at boot. After a successful installation, I am stuck. I can't go anywhere. Uh, nobody replied for uh, one day and the next day someone replied. But the next day I was already taking pictures of the computer because I was going to get rid of it. See, I don't need a second system here. The reason why this Macintosh project started is because I am tired of Windows 10. Cropping and shitting on my drivers and making it seem like my drivers are bad when Windows 10 is just crap. But anyway, someone replied with a link that um, after Mac OS Sierra, uh, the, up, the latest update on May 15th, uh, the 10.12.5, the operating system changed some of the text on the Intel drivers. See, and that is the problem that I was having. I could not get back in because the Mac OS Sierra was not detecting or it was, or my CPU was not being recognized. That's the error that I kept getting. So I would get stuck in there forever and never to get back into the OS. So after that, guys, I followed the instructions. I went ahead, uh, the instructions said, go ahead and download Kext Beast and download these two kext uh, files download them put them in your desktop and then run the kext beast uh, program or the app right so i followed the instructions i ran kext beast installed my intel graphics and this one here too these two files and after that guys i was so nervous i was kind of shaky because of how many days i've already spent trying to fix this problem and i couldn't right so then I go ahead and run this app and this text. To my surprise, I was able to get back in to the Mac OS Sierra. And ever since, I have been able to get back in. So I learned a couple of things. So if you're following a guide two or three months from now, or maybe five, six, seven, eight months, my the best bet I'm going to tell you is not going to work. Or the best bet before installing the operating system, go ahead and ask on the forums, what do you need 
done before installing anything so you can save yourself sometimes but anyways after having a successful boot after this fix right here fixing the intel graphics it was time for me to install my graphics card so i follow some guys on tony mac x86 right how to enable this graphics card and successfully i got my rx 460 working perfectly fine uh, some people say that the gigabyte rx 460 works out of the box let me tell you something no it doesn't you have to go into the text and you have to change a lot of things in there and you also have to change your config pit list you have to change that as well otherwise it's not going to work you're not going to have a gpu acceleration none of that so why am i making this video in my graphics cards on my hand you may be asking yourself right what a waste of money yeah i paid 100 dollars for this graphics card on new egg why is it on my hands final cut pro is not compatible with this graphics card i play some games yeah not as good as the performance on windows i also ran the heaven benchmark it works okay all right I, i'm not really expecting great performance on a, on, on a mac os on a mac os uh, operating system so i go ahead and open final cut pro and to my surprise it doesn't work as soon as i launch final cut pro it crashes it shuts down i try to troubleshoot the problem many many people have the same issue with final cut pro and the rx graphics cards uh, also uh, some people have issues even with the 280x from amd which is the most compatible graphics card for mac at the moment and it doesn't work so i decided to take it out of the computer and i am using right now integrated graphics now i did a comparison render test comparison uh, this computer with the integrated graphics versus Premiere Pro on my uh, big machine right here. This computer, guys, believe it or not, a 10 minute video with some effects here and there, the same effects on that computer, some color correction and whatnot, the same, very, very same clip. This computer, Final Cut Pro, rendered that clip in five minutes. Now, I wasn't using background render. I know what you might be asking. Oh, you were using background render. No, I wasn't. I disabled it for that purpose because Premiere doesn't have it either. So I went ahead and hit the render, hit the render on that one. I checked the timings. This computer rendered that clip in five minutes. That computer took 12 minutes to render the same clip. So I am not here to trash Premiere Pro, but my Hackintosh computer renders the video so good and so fast that I am not even mad. I'm not even complaining. I am actually happy. And this computer is so responsive, guys. It works perfectly fine all right guys i'm gonna end the video like that i have a successful mac os so if you're planning to build a hacking touch computer let me tell you something hang in there don't give up hang in there look for help go to forums ask questions don't be afraid to you know me asking these questions sometimes i feel like i'm gonna get hate from the communities and whatnot some people don't even reply to you but some people do and I thank those people at Tony Mac X86. Beautiful, beautiful community. They are down to help if you drop a question. They are down. They comment. They reply to you if they got the answer. This was your host, Sergio with Tech Over Clock. I'll see you guys next time. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. Like I said, please don't forget to give me a like down below, guys. You guys are awesome. I'll see you guys next time.